Uh, how do you think this new album will be different from previous ones? Um, you know, try to do every album, you know, something a little bit different. I mean, there's obviously there's uh, the meat and potatoes exodus, what I call it. You know, you get, you're going to get the dose of what people are expecting from exodus. But then, you know, there's some twists and, and turns on this album that, you know, people might not expect. Um, I think, I mean, you know, personally, it's, it's going to be a lot more diverse than, like, last couple albums. Um, any, tip, any tips on speed picking? <laughs> Just keep practicing. I mean, that's the only way to get faster, you know. But don't focus all on fast stuff, you know. It's like it's, yes, they don't focus all on fast stuff. Yeah, Andy. You know, it, it's it's a lot harder. You find out it's a lot harder to play one note that you know that's with a lot of feeling than doing a run, you know, with a hundred notes. So just practice both. Uh, which song was most difficult for you to play from the set list? Uh, I assume that's from the Exodus set list. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, I guess, uh, let me see. I guess Riot Act, I mean, that always fucks with me. And not just me, you know. Um, that, that was, you know, that was kind of a tough one to catch on. I mean, I know it sounds simple, but it's, you know, it's a lot harder to play than you would expect. Um... Are there any players out there today that really catch your eye? If so, which ones and why? What made you record in the house as opposed to just regular studio? Um, there's a lot of, I mean, a lot of good players out there. I mean, it's like, if anything, more now than it was before, because everybody caught on, you know, after Ingve did, you know, and Eddie Van Halen, you know, did all the... The hammer-ons and Ingve brought you know the whole classical style you know into metal rock whatever. Um, a lot of players I mean just start practicing that and got really good at it. So there's a lot of great guitar players out there. You know I mean it's just you can't mention all of them. Uh, and why why we chose to record in the in the house as opposed to the studio. Um, it was just an idea for, you know, to, so we all, you know, kind of spend time together and, you know, and, and kind of work on things while one guy is recording, the other, you know, guys can work on stuff, you know, I mean, it's no distractions, like, if you're in the studio and you go home, I mean, then you come back to the studio and kind of try to get into, back into that record, you know, recording mode, or... Here it was like basically recording mode like 24-7, you know, and, and things would just go faster that way, I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, what is your live rig? Um, it, it changes from time to time. I mean, you know, I started out with, you know, with the Marshall JCM 800s back in the day and moved on to Mesa Boogie. Um, for the last few years, I mean, we've been, you know, me and Gary have been using those triple X's and they sounded, you know, pretty awesome. But um, now, I mean, we signed with Angle, you know, tried that, those amps and really liked them. So we used them on this album. And, uh, you yeah, know, so we're Angle guys now. And... If you could make... <laughs> If you could make an un one underground thrash metal band famous, who would it be and why? Uh, Exodus. And why? Because we deserve it. <laughs> um, what metal bands do you admire the most? Influence and just, just plain respect. Again, I mean, so many. I mean, you know, from the back in the day to, you know, what got me started, like... Uh, Rainbow and Deep Purple, you know, and then on to Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, then Lizzie, uh, and then was, you know, Venom, Metallica, you know, Exodus, Slayer, and you know, so on. I mean, it's just, there are too many bands. I mean, every kind of decade had its own influence, you know, on me. 
what I, and what I liked, you know. Um, I guess except the, the grunge era, I mean, I've never really got into that, but... Um, let's see. Oh, the influences? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, what got me started, you know, I started playing guitar after I heard, you know, Richie Blackmore, Deep Purple, and that's when I, when I knew, I mean, I, I wanted to play guitar, you know, so I guess he would be the biggest influence. But along the way, like you said, I mean, there are so many people that came, you know, that you, you hear and become your influences. John Sykes, I mean, I, I'm a really big fan of his, and, you know, and... I mean, from any kind of style, you can find somebody who's really good and, you know, and you just pick things up from them or just blatantly steal. Um, let's see. When you're on tour or any sort of meeting with fans, do you become friends or at least correspond with certain fans? Oh, that's, that's my ringtone. Oh. That's my mom calling. I wonder if she's watching. Um, let's see, where, where was I? Oh, yeah, I mean, when we tour, I mean, I've, I've be, you know, become friends, you know, with somebody I've met on tour, definitely. I mean, there's no any kind of specific, like, formula to, like, why do you get along with somebody? You just meet, you know, meet somebody and, uh, you know, and be, become friends. I mean, it's not a plan kind of thing, you know. If you're asking, like, how, how do you become friends with me or something, I mean, there's no, you know, it's just, it's either we just get along and hit it off or, you know. And that's just, it's kind of a weird question. Huh? Um, do you like recording in the house rather than traditional studio? Um, yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I think it was better. Like I said before, it was uh, that we were all together, kind of working on stuff together, you know, and um, I was opposed to the, you know, big studio. I mean, it has some advantages and disadvantages, but overall, I think, uh, you know, the house thing, I mean, uh, we're going to be doing that from now on. I mean, you know, everybody seemed to enjoy it. Um, let's see. What are your some of the most memorable experiences with Exodus and Heathen? Um, well, with Heathen, it was uh, the first, the very first European tour that we did with Sepultura. Um, you know, we got to play a lot of cool places. And the first time in Europe, you know, we were like really looking forward to it. I mean, we always heard like from everybody how cool it is in Europe and everybody loves metal over there, you know, and and we finally got to see it for ourselves, you know. Um, so that that was definitely one of the highlights in Heathen. Um, with Exodus, I mean, I would say, Va you know, Vakin, I mean, that's, you know, that was pretty awesome. I mean, I'd definitely never forget that. What else? Your top three favorite Thin Lizzy songs? Eh, that's like impossible. I mean, I can't even name top three Thin Lizzy albums. I mean, I just love all of them. You know, and it could it could change from time to time. I mean, I could be, you know, like this month really into Black Rose, and then next month and you know like Chinatown more, or you know, or Thunder and Lightning. So, uh, you know, I can pick and choose what would be the my favorite, you know. Uh, what's your favorite songs to play from both Exodus and Heathen? Um, well, with Exodus, I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, uh, being a huge fan of Exodus in the early days, you know, Bonded by Blood, whenever I got to play those songs, that was, you know, a big thrill for me. I mean, it's still, I mean, I still enjoy playing those songs, you know. You know, like Gary and Tom are kind of burnt on it, but it, understandably, you know. Uh, and with Heathen, um, I would say probably Hypnotized. I mean, I really like playing that song. It's kind of a challenge, but, um, you know, and uh, 
I don't know. I like playing heathen song. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it's hard to say. That changes too. It's like, I mean, you, you could be playing some song, you know, on tour and just burn out on it and then bring another song in, you know, that you haven't played in a while and that one just, you know, you enjoy playing that one a lot more. If you write a riff, how do you decide whether a riff is used for heathen or exodus? If you, have, <laughs> if you could have any car in the world, what would you have? Uh, if I could have any car in the world, I'd probably a Lamborghini. I mean, can't go wrong there. Probably kill myself in that car. <laughs> <laughs>